All right. Um, we're back. Finally had a chance to get another recording in. And let's do some talking about the Oceania and Australian meta. Um, so in the last uh, couple of weeks since the new set release, there have been um, three big Australian tournaments. Uh, I figured I would cover all these in one go. And then I'll have a second video where I'll try to cover some of the like continental qualifiers and stuff from uh, Europe as well. Uh, it's kind of a prep for all my European friends and uh, folks that are going to be going to the European Continental Championship. Uh, Material Cup Good Games Adelaide. Um, this was, wow, I, I, a full month ago now. Um, it was one of the first events of the new meta um, after like the... Uh, Portland Materia Cup. Um, I won this event. I have a full breakdown on the channel. Go dig and find it. Um, all of the games are up on uh, Red Lantern Superman's channel now as well. If you want to go check out the games from Top Cut, you can kind of see my path to victory. Um, at some point, I kind of want to go back and watch those and kind of give some thought processes, but it's Rafi Control. Um, I think it's a pretty stamped list at this point. I think like the only quote unquote bold decision I make is I still refuse to play three Zidane. Um, for better or worse, I like the utility of a lot of the other cards that I'm playing. So um, deck is fantastic. Um, let's go over some of the more colorful stuff here. So first, second place was just monster control this is an extremely dirtily deck um if you don't know what that means it's like this deck wants to just go nice and slow and take its time and build up all these monsters um you know it's on eight forwards um which is really interesting because it means that the shinryu is pretty much always live i think the only card that, like doesn't interact well with it is like silver dragon is a like monster that can't not be a forward everything else is like only occasionally a forward um this honestly reminds me a lot of like almost a japanese style list um just like the way that it plays to extremes you know we're on 17 backups we're on 20 monsters and we're on just the eight forwards and like mira is here for kind of like a situational utility she's kind of a forward in some ways and in some ways she's really there to like be uh, additional costs on monsters and to help the stall game plan. Uh, three copies of Hecaton Cheer. This is obviously a very strong board control presence. That said, I do want to point out that 8K doesn't hit a lot of decks at all. Um, of the big decks right now, Mono Earth is often going to keep you know over half of their board intact through this. And Chaos. Chaos has three 9Ks on field. Um, be very good into knights, for instance. I think um, you could kill everything but the gorilla, and then they have to find like the Renoa for the gorilla, which would be difficult to do. Um, also, note this is the first time we've seen the uh, five speed king tycoon in a while. Um, I think this he really started to kind of fall out of favor on Opus Seventeen when Mono Wind was really taking off, and it just kind of was decided there wasn't a need for a card like this in the deck. Um, however, this is almost a throwback to the old Valifor days where you could go like, um, way back in the day, there was an old meta deck that was just like a bunch of monsters that could become forwards and you would build them up, build them up, build them up, build them up, build them up. And then you would Valifor everything back in hand, which is a very difficult card to interact with. And then you would just animate all of your monsters and swing for game. King Tycoon can perform a similar role as Kian Shantoto and Hecaton Shear. And Matoya. So we've got a lot of board wipes. Um, Shinryu is another one. Um, Shinryu in decks with Atomos as well is so good. You can like play Shinryu, search a copy of itself, even paying full retail. Go to combat, attack with Atomos, and then Shinryu special using the new the newly activated backups you have. It, it's so strong. Um, Sarah, Sarah can't search King Tycoon. Um, uh, more likely, she's going to search Epitaph to go for Mira. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I think we're a little light on wind backups in general if we're trying to have the wind splash. Um, I get the idea. Like, the Evray and the Atomos are so strong, but 
I do almost wonder if we were better off just cutting the wind, playing Earth Water, and then just running the uh, like the Silver Dragon as a back attack off of the Animus is really cool, and you could also like get the Atomos into play off of like a Tyro or something. I don't know. Like the Atomos is so strong. I mean, maybe you could just run like Realm as well in your forward slots to get the Realm and every out and use that to, to ramp your backups. Um, Stilts can obviously also is really cool. Gets your Mira. Um, or your Evre, but uh, it's definitely a really interesting list. Um, these are really difficult to play against for some decks. Uh, in particular, the Refuge Control list does not really have a good answer to monsters. Um, and actually, some builds of Chaos can actually struggle against this deck. Um, you can go uh, Mira Zombie can kind of prevent three points of damage, and the Chaos deck can't really, you know... You get, like, one bullet with Lightning if you're not on Gilgamesh. And if that's the case, then they just need to not die to the one turn where the Lightning comes into play. So, definitely a really interesting list. Uh, moving right along. Uh, oh. Third, Mono Earth. Um, these are... This is pretty standard. This is... Uh, Kind of just what I would call the fixed version of Ryan Chen's list from Portland. Um, we do have one Chaos player in Top Cut. This is, of course, the infamous Richie with a Gilgamesh Chaos list. Um, there's two different builds of Chaos going around. There's kind of a Water Lightning, and then there's also the uh, this like uh, Ice Water one, I would say. Um, there's some cool stuff here. Using Realm to get out either a Cleone or like even Realm play Buckaboo Flan is kind of like getting a Theodore out sometimes. When combined with like the Chaos, you end up with like a pretty competent discard plan actually and like the resource denial. I think the only thing that I see in this list that I'm kind of questioning is I think the Lufenian should maybe be Delita. Um, it's nice to have access to an Ice backup, but like Lufenian can't hit people in the face. And she's a very dead after the Ezel and the Larsa. If you go for um, instead Delita, you have something that can do damage, something that uh, poses a further threat on field. Um, you have another two. I mean, they're both two CP, but so you know it doesn't help the Larsa. But I would have liked that. Uh, definitely an interesting list, though. Um, again, it's very strange. Uh, I've been doing a lot of. I do a lot of research on the game. And Chaos is not performing outside of Japan. Uh, this deck is doing incredibly well in Japan. It's doing pretty well at getting to Top Cut, I would say, but I also do know that in uh, the North American Continentals, the most common deck in the room after Mono Earth was Chaos, and it did not have a high conversion rate. So I don't know if it's actually a player skill issue or deck building issue, what it is and what the Japanese players are doing, but it's doing like extremely well in Japan. Like half of Top Cut is always this deck and it is not performing elsewhere. Um, maybe everywhere else is just more prepared for it, which is strange because I would say Japan usually is very good at dealing with logical extremes because that's, that is what Japan does. They will play the most degenerate control, the most degenerate combo, the most degenerate aggro decks possible. And they know to prepare for stuff like this. So it's very interesting. Just something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, one of the most interesting decks here, uh, we had a Wind Water Monster list. Um, I was actually rooming with Justin at the event, so I actually had a bit of input into some of this deck. Uh, but this is like a Wind Water Crystals, like X and Melee package. Um, the baseline for this a long time ago was like the Steve D video. Uh, but let's kind of go bit by bit here. Um, X and Melee is a really, really strong card. Um, being this Schrodinger's 9k, that's also Schrodinger's untargetable, that also can play cards like Yuna from the deck. I, I think that people have been sleeping on this card since spoiler season. Um, and I think that it's really starting to show how powerful it can be. Um, as a part of that, we do want a bunch of three-cost water forwards. Our targets, we have Glacella, obviously a very, very strong card, especially in a monster deck that takes advantage of character count stuff. Uh, Witch of the Fens, again, monsters, loves that. 
and uh, one copy of Rahal. Uh, oh, and Yuna. Yuna is like Yuna's a good card. Uh, <laughs> um, between the stuff like the uh, Buddy and the backups like the uh, Waka Brother, uh, Evre Piranha. Yuna just kind of gets better and better over time, and then she does really get strong on damage three. Um, the other tech card in the three slot, we do have Edge. Because there's so many crystals, you kind of end up in this weird situation where Edge does a lot for you. Um, maybe you need to protect your Glacial from dying to Amaterasu. Now you can pay two, pull Edge out. Now the Glacial lives. We're already generating crystals with our Dragoons and Oracles anyway. Um... Maybe we need to protect an Exxon Mill. Like, there's just so many situations where this edge is actually just really good. It's incidental break zone hate if you need it. Um, it closes games out. You can bring it in, haste it, uh, kill it with a witch, bring it back, swing in again, and just kind of keep going as for as many crystals and cards as you have in hand. Um, three copies of Realm. Needs no introduction. It's one of the best cards in the game. Uh, three copies of Tidus. This is here for a couple reasons. Obviously, it's a great EX burst. Pairs very well with Tros. You can kind of have this be like, bounce a thing, draw two, gain a crystal, which is obviously really strong. But alternatively, it is the best card to be playing with Yuna. Um, Yuna plays any character, so you can actually play backups off of Yuna, which is something I didn't know. Um, you can play a backup, you can play like a Piranha if you don't have better targets. But in general, you're looking to play Tidus on damage five, which puts this deck in an awkward situation where like you have multiple damage thresholds, like damage three, okay, well now that Atomos is alive, damage five, now the Yuna is completely broken um so really cool to see that one copy of the goddess um this was one of my recommendations um i know that justin said he didn't love it on the day but it is like the most effective combination of, like it's decent slot compression it, it's it's an okay board wipe even if it's a slow one and it's breaks on hate which is nice and like, it's it's a problem your opponent has to get rid of. It is just expensive. And it, it is like, it does not stop the problem immediately. But there are times where this kind of does, you, you squint and this is the demon, right? Like, all their stuff breaks. Maybe you block with one of them. Or block the smaller thing, take a point of damage here or there. And then you have, like, the breaks of the removal and a board wipe that the demon gives you. It, it really is not... This card hasn't seen a ton of play, but it is a lot closer than I think people give it credit for to being a very strong card. Um, for the monsters, Evre, three Piranha, three of Kalu. Um, those are our one cost for Realm, all of which are very strong for different reasons. Um, only two Blue Worms is a little surprising. Um, the Cleon obviously makes a lot of sense given that we are not on any summons ourselves, so... Making sure that our realm resolves through something like Amaterasu is very good. Um, I will say if you are playing Cleon, you're signaling to your opponent that you are not doing that. But one other thing that people don't realize about Cleon is if your opponent isn't playing summons, you can proc the draw yourself with Witch. Um, Cleon does not care how it goes from the field of the break zone, only that it does. Uh, two copies of Blue Worm. Um, one, two copies of Atomos, two copies of Tros. The, the one Silver Dragon, this is kind of a nice way of protecting your Atomos and your Blue Worm. And then once you have your Hippocampos, this was one more recommendation that I gave. Um, effectively, what I've seen in these decks is that sometimes Witch doesn't actually do enough damage. So what you can do instead is you can do the Cleave with Hippocampos, get you know 3k damage on, and now Witch kills anything. Um, on top of being a very sticky and difficult to remove threat for some decks. Or... If you don't draw your witch, maybe you end up with a bunch of monsters and five backups and two forwards, and that hippocampus, you know, does do seven K cleave every turn. Um, also makes it very easy to trade up. You could like block with a blue worm, animate the or animate with blue worm, block with it, and then do the hippocampus cleave to like make the blue worm trade up into like a ten K. Uh, backups, we have the Yagrosh, the Lena, uh, the Crystal Gen backups, and then a very small FF ten engine. Um, and yeah, very interesting for sure. Um, Nathan's Firewater Warriors. We'll see a bit of this later because this won the Games Portal Ringwood uh, Continental Qualifier. But, um, 
I would say this deck has kind of almost become like the backbone of the metagame, like the the, the quote unquote third pillar in a way. At um, U.S. Nationals, this was like the best other performing deck that wasn't the uh, Mono Earth. There were a lot of people playing this like Fire Water Warriors deck. Um, if you're not familiar with this deck by now, you definitely should be because I would expect to see a lot of it. Um, and really, it, it is just like Tyvus is a board in a can card. Um, you can kind of go one backup into Tyvus, Axtar into like a Zidane, and you're kind of off to the races. Next turn, you play a Ferian off of the Tyvus. Like Tyvus presents a threat your opponent has to answer and doesn't necessarily want to, while Zidane makes those answers harder to find. It, it, it this really is kind of the backbone of the deck and why it works. Um, it's strong. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Suzano. For sure, that wouldn't be in my list. I would probably just run two copies of the Demon instead. But I do kind of understand why it's there. It does give some reach that maybe the Demon doesn't necessarily give. And uh, yeah, very cool list. Um, yeah, give it a shot yourself so you know how to play against this, because I would expect to see a lot of it at any given large tourney. This is the other version of Chaos. Um, this is the um, Water Lightning version. Uh, some really cool text here that I even remember. Uh, Mist Dragon in Chaos, you need as a way of kind of playing defense against other Mist Dragons is kind of cool. Um, I do like the Odins. Thornton, I think, is a little expensive for Chaos. I would be worried about not having enough to do things, but it does mean that like our own Luna Freyas are actually a lot better. And Luna Freya is actually kind of nice in Chaos because you're kind of a combo deck in a way. I've heard people like say, well, it's like, it really is almost like a combo aggro deck. And Luna Freya to dig for those pieces, and then you hit a Thornton, and Luna Freya gets any of those pieces for, you know, not much more expensive than Leo, because we don't have the backups anyway. Um, a little surprising to not see the Ezel, especially given we're on, like, the two Vanil, but I do sort of understand, like, the Reeve is very good. Um, it's definitely a cool list. Uh, we're not on Cleone in this deck, because we're on our own Mist Dragon and our own Odins for our Lightning, but... Um, a little surprised to see the Upkalu, because I don't think we have a lot of ways of making a big use of it. I almost wonder if that should have been like a Piranha, but I guess like you're not taking damage, so the Piranha isn't actually any good. Um, yeah. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have Alex Wells with Mono Earth. Um, Alex Wells is a testing partner of mine. I'm pretty familiar with this list, and it's very standard Mono Earth stuff. Um so let's go to the games portal ringwood combo qualifier um so here is nathan's list uh, he did get rid of the susano for this one uh this looks like to me like the stock standard like this is the build of this deck that you should be kind of play testing against if you want to know what this deck is like all about uh the only other thing i will say about this deck that's interesting is your backups are like water primary and your forwards are fire heavy um that said you kind of a lot of times like i said you want to get just the one backup for tyvis anyway it almost doesn't matter what color that is you'll have a fire card to play it any or to play it so um i was there on the refia um we have a four color good stuff deck with uh, a dark with manifest as well and yeah, this is kind of like a Formelda control in a way. Like we have like the Formelda, which is a card that is a, a lot better than I think people give, it, give her credit for. To the point where we're even on the three Shantoto to enable the Formelda. Again, you see those backup counts really starting to balloon in these decks, trying to guarantee they get to those. I want to do a video discussion on that later. Um, for a long time, the logic was, you know, 14 backups, 13 backups, going to squeeze down to 12, and now we're right back up to 17, which is so interesting to me that like the the number of backups in decks is actually going up over time and everything but like you know like or it's going way down decks are playing very few backups or a lot of backups it feels like these days um i think a lot of it has to do with the way the limit break deck impacts what backups are meant to be doing now um love the one tech card phoenix uh we don't have a ton of use for our break zone outside of like the two sith and i guess like the une but having a 4 CP kill something that also can kind of do damage later on is very strong. Uh, Darkness Manifest as well. Um, if we can get the right colors of cards in the break zone, you can kind of... 
I, I kind of like Darkness Manifest in any deck that's running the Claris, Edgar, King Tycoon, Lena engine because there's a good chance that some number of these are going to end up in the break zone over the first couple of turns, and you just have to find the fire card for Darkness Manifest. Um, Mono Earth from Ethan Webb. Um, yeah, Ethan's signature tech to me is this one copy of Fusoya. I've been hit by this so many times against him. Uh, one copy of Backup Breaking Hecka. I've considered this as a way to try to win the mirror match. You can go like Backup Break Hecka plus an Une. Now all of a sudden the Neo X deaths are punishing them so much harder, especially if you could factor in something like maybe a Fusoya earlier to like bounce a backup or something. And um... One copy of Riku. Um, this is kind of a like, play by preference card. She shows up on occasion in these decks. Kind of be ready for her. But also of note, like she's kind of like another Leo in a way, but she is more expensive to get down than Leo. But you also can like trade a card in hand for the best Earth card in your break zone, which could be really cool with her. Um, Turbo Chaos by Robert Meadows. I played him in Top Cut. Um, this is another list, kind of like the um, Richie style. We have like three Lufenian. Uh, 14 backups feels a little high for me, although I will say I love Artemisia in this list. Um, being able to do... I think Artemisia is maybe just the most underplayed card in the game in general. I think most water decks might be benefited by having a copy of this guy in the deck because of the way that he smooths out mulligans. You never have to mulligan if you have Artemisia in hand. Um, you can just always do it. Um, Realm is in here, I believe, mostly as... Um, as a little pitch fodder, we do have stuff like the Buckaboo to try to force a double discard and get your... I guess if you go like Chaos Special plus Buckaboo, there are a lot of decks that are going to just straight fold to that. Um, I would be worried about cards like Sarah FFL can like play around the Buckaboo by like ditching the hand to play it. But it's really, it's just a way of trying to stun your opponent for a turn. Um, I really think the Lufenians should still just be the, uh, the three copies of Delita and just not play an Ice Backup. But that's just me. Uh, rest of this looks pretty normal, honestly. Um, Scotto Kelly. Um, so this is like a Siren control list. We have like 13 forwards. Um, Siren plus Gallif is admittedly really difficult for some decks to deal with. Obviously, we have a large number of summons. I almost would like to see a Titan in here just to protect the Siren from something like an Amaterasu. Um, right now, our only way of doing that is to have like the Mist Dragon in hand, but like it is very possible to like target something and then Amat to kill the Siren. Um, interesting to see the Gilgamesh as well. I don't love this card still. I think that the maintenance cost on it is just too high. Uh, even with like... It seems like it could be strong with the Siren to protect it, but it also has kind of its own built-in protection. It just seems so expensive relative to like what the Galif does or like the Une or any of those other cards. Um, love the Animas in here as well. Um, Anima in any kind of control deck I think is really strong. Just get it out of here. I don't want to see it again. Um, just really strong unconditional removal, especially paired with the unit and it can cost two potentially, two CP, we both draw a card and something of yours is removed from the game is really strong. Um, yeah, moving along. We have Brian, who is from my locals on Mono Earth, playing the Terra tech. I am so happy to be a bad influence on people, but it is really funny when this card comes down and people read it the first time. Like, and they go, oh, oh crap, I'm dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> the responses you get when this card hits the playing field are so funny. Uh, it, it's unreal how just hilariously strong this card can be at times. Um, I think the rest of this is about as normal for Mono Earth as it gets. Um, squeezed a little bit on stuff like the Amaterasu's for like the, the fire builds of Mono Earth, but I get the idea as well, trying to make room for the extra Titans. And we can't hard cast Amaterasu very easily anyway without like a Tyro down. So um, I, I, I 
I mean, Mono Earth is just a really strong deck, almost no matter what you do with it. Um, lastly, we have another Richie style Mono Earth. I think this is the same exact deck as the previous one. I know the Flans are new, as is like the Realm. Um, so this is this is just straight up Richie's deck, I believe. Um, from the uh, thing, okay. So these are decks I don't know nearly as well. These are the Continental Qualifiers from New South Wales. This is the Sydney area, um, not the Victoria, Melbourne area. And I guess Adelaide is South Australia, but um, that was a material. Kept more people travel for that. Uh, winter, Mono Earth. Um, nothing surprising here whatsoever. This is about as stock standard as it gets. You see, like, the text slots, like the Suzuhisa, are. You know, sometimes not always in these decks, but um, second place is um, a Refia control list, but with a little bit of a difference, it looks like. It looks like we're on like the, the King engine for our backups. So a lot less Warriors of Light in the deck in general. Still have the 25 bursts. Um, Claris, I don't hate to get the King Tycoon. It's not bad. Um, Edgar, you can use and just kind of break later on to play like the Luna from hand. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and the rest of these are just Warriors of Light. So yeah, it is like Refuge Control with a little bit of strangeness in the backups running for Melda as a tech slot over like where I'm on the Terras. Um, and we slim down one Mist Dragon to make room for some of the cards. I'm seeing this Luna show up a bit as well, especially in Japan as well. I've seen two of this Luna and one of this one before. Um, it's definitely interesting, something to keep an eye on, um, and know that it could be a possibility if you're against a Raffia deck that you could lose all of your 5k forwards. Um, Rob Baron on Chaos. Uh, Rob is the person who I mentioned in the last video that is big on Ultimicia in Chaos. I'm almost surprised we're not on, like, an idea or something here to, like, also go further and just, like give up on stuff like the Ultimicia, maybe, but I, I, the, it's an awkward situation, right? Because the more, you, the deeper you go in this, the worse Lars or Ezel gets, the less two cost you have. So maybe we just need it for that. But same thing, I really don't like Sophie in Chaos. It's just, I get the idea, it's water, it's earth, it costs two, but like, we could almost run Vanille in that slot, and maybe we actually cast the Vanille. Um, I do think that like, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, Cleones are really solid. A lot heavier on the Odins as well than I think you almost have to be. Like, it's interesting because like the, the idea behind running Odins in general is to power up the lightning. So it's like, oh, I'll put the best Odins with a burst in. Sure, why not? And it's like, the other question I have then is, why are we not loading up on lightnings? Like, shouldn't we... It's like, oh, well, those aren't bursts, but we have six bursts. Like, we're not bursting as a game plan. This is like a random thing that will occasionally happen and help us. In that situation, is it like maybe like one copy of the three CP lightning really good? Or maybe like there's a two CP haste lightning lightning that like you can play and it bounces to hand at the end of the turn. Um, that would pitch into Ezel. And if you mill it, you can remove it from game to play lightning and kind of cascade one extra lightning down. Um, I almost wonder if like, that's better than the Odin would be, right? In this situation. Um, but I will say it also is very funny to imagine ultimicia somebody. Um, no parties is... Yeah, water monsters with like a sp sprinkle of lightning cards, but the sprinkle of lightning cards is there. Not to play the Mira. Mira, people don't realize this when they read the card. Mira doesn't have a color. Um, she is... You you don't ever need to pay for Mira properly. You, you play a monster, sack it to play the Mira. She just replaces one. Um, this deck is... Ooh, whoa. I cannot believe we're not on Larsa here. I mean, I guess we want the EXs off of... All of our backups have EX burst, which is nice, but... Um, that is an interesting backup lineup. Um, three copies of Live 6, trying to survive against Chaos. One thing about playing a large quantity of monsters like this is that you do not get access to uh, Burst. No monster in the game has a Burst. Um, Gizm Luke is not going to win in this deck. Black Widow, similarly. It's a really interesting list. 
Um, Evre, we don't have the Atomos, we're in, because we don't have backups. We don't, why would we need Atomos, really? Um, Evre, like, wants a turn for, like, a Blue Goo or a Sahagin or Piranha. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Um, three Witch. Surprised to see no copies of Hippocampus in here, given the number of uniquely named characters we can put on the field. Really interesting stuff. Um, very cool list, honestly. Uh, I, I do think that this Mira is very strong, very slept on, being able to have... I guess Mira with Every actually is really cool, too, because you can just always untap it back for the end of your turn. Um, otherwise, in Chaos, but this time used with kind of the monster mode, not really going for the special as much. Yeah, really cool deck. Um, Troy Armstrong, this looks like a mono water deck. Yep. Um, yeah, this looks a lot like the Steve D style mono water. We have the Leno Leviathan play. Uh, 2 Lena, 3 Lev is kind of becoming the standard ratio from 2-2. Two, two. Um, Ash, Gao, Realm obviously very strong, Witch very good. I, I still think if you're on Realm, you should run an Atomos. It opens up the ability to run a copy of Sid Highwind in your LB deck if you want to. And the difference, if he's like, well, well, I can draw the Atomos. It's like, well, if you draw the Atomos, you don't play the Atomos. But if you don't have it in the deck, you can't play it anyway. So you're not losing anything. I think it's in particular in Mono Water, the way that, you know, it abuses the backups and the ability to go, okay, um, backup, and then I go Atomos and uh, Kalu, and I draw a card, and then I play a second backup, and then I untap two, and then I play a Blue Worm, and, like, the way it snowballs is so strong that I wouldn't be caught dead without playing Atomos in, in a deck that's playing Realm, but... Um, Richie on... What can only be described as the Richie deck, which is like this FF8 stuff. Um, Fire Lightning FF8. Of note, by the way, I don't know how many people follow this. The best deck in L3? It's not Warriors. It's not Knights. It's not even Gigawall. Um, it is it is FF8. Like, hard FF8. Like, no backups. Lufenian FF8. Like, the FF8 cards are really strong and really pushed. And I do have to wonder if there is a constructed FF8 deck that people just have not gotten into Top Cut yet that is as strong as the other stuff people are doing. Um, I don't know if the L3 Championship is on here. Um, I don't believe it is. I'll have to go... Maybe I'll go add it at some point for other people. Um... I'm going to pull this up just because I want to talk about it a bit. Sorry, you guys are going to deal with a tangent for me talking about more of Japanese meta. Um, yes, as it, like I said, I, I love researching Japanese meta because I think it's really interesting. Um, and L3 is a very interesting format. And I think that people don't look at L3 enough to try to discover what could be playable in standard sometimes. Like, Sophie Doga was originally an L3 deck, right? Uh, I'm so sad Eric didn't qualify here. Um, Eric got top four, which was not good enough to qualify for Worlds. Uh, top two in this event qualified for Worlds, by the way. Um, but, like, this got second place, and this is FF8 with, I guess, Lufenian, Red Mage, Sarah, like a Turbo Discard FF8, basically. And I do wonder if something is here for standard constructed that just has not been experimented with enough. Because this deck looked really competent, and I almost have to wonder... I mean, sure, there's more answers. I think part of it is that a lot of the answers that people have to a deck like this are in... set. You know, have now rotated out of L3. But also, there's got to be stuff that like this deck isn't playing that it can take advantage of. Stuff like the Renoa forward um, and such, right? So, really interesting stuff. Um, very funny as well. Seymour was like... Uh, some of the cards you see in L3 are fun. Uh, Seymour, uh, Lilith set is like a staple in Gigawall because of the ability to 
search a copy of itself. Uh, they don't even run a dancer backup. It's just it searches itself for the special. And now you're like, you win combat as long as Lil' Set's on the field. Really funny stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, anyways, FF8 is, I think, better than people give it credit for, I guess, is the, the TLDR. Um, is this the build of it? I don't know. Um, we kind of get to splash a little bit of wind because of Fujin and the Bart's is definitely a card I did not expect to see here. Um, Bart's is cool. It's like literally a free backup. I, I could see the usefulness for it. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a, a very interesting pile of cards <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, Richie was, like, this is like the Richie style deck. I, I really don't know how to explain it. Other than that, like, Richie plays stuff like this, and it'll work for him. Um, some Earth Lightning Chaos Arc, I think. I've not seen this deck in a while. This really fell out of favor in North America. Um, it does have some advantages. Uh, the Illusory Warlock Lady with X-Death, obviously, is really good. X-Death is so strong right now. Um, I think most decks do not like seeing this guy on the field. Um, and it is like a silver bullet against chaos as well. Um, full three copies of Sistane is like really surprising. I, it is nice. You can discard and actually the other Odin gives it another thing I can discard to do heavy damage. Um, yeah, very, uh, don't see anything else that's like too crazy for sure, but, um, And lastly, I think this is going to be just, uh, yeah, this is Refia, but one copy of Vossler to get our King Tycoon. And we're down a copy of King Tycoon. We're also down on backups in general. 16 backups seems um, low. So we're actually up on forwards. We made room for a Sophie, a Vossler, the third arc. Okay. Um, the full three copies of Zidane. We cut Amaterasu and a Mist Dragon from our summons. We cut the Shantoto. One King Tycoon. We're on a copy of Larsa in our backups. That's kind of a surprising one. And one copy of Thornton. Very interesting take on Refia, honestly. Uh, 27 burst, though. We're even higher than uh, my list is. Granted, this is three arcs, so it's kind of like 24 real burst. But um, really cool deck. Um, and that is our wrap-up of the Australian meta. Um, I always say Australia is kind of the Wild West. It plays a lot of everything, and nothing makes a lot of sense here. And there were a lot of different decks that did well. Um, a lot of chaos, a lot of mono earth, um, but I mean, that's kind of the case everywhere else in the world. So, um, yeah, I will try to get the European one up as well before uh, European Continentals. That way, that if any of my, you know, people are trying to gauge, oh, hey, what is, what's good in Europe right now? We can get that information out for you as well. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.